In this discourse, I will speak about some aspects of North criticism and the spirit of North. We need to know that North of the Prophet is the most difficult literary genre to produce. However, Allama Yusuf bin Ismail an Nabhani, a Nar poet of great literary caliber, has comprehensively described how the majority of companions would compose Nar poetry when rating Allah's Messenger. According to him, they have been writing, reciting, publishing, and promoting Nar over the last 14 centuries with great zeal everywhere. The elite as well as common people displayed their devotion, humility and veneration equally well and made the tradition of Nath of the Prophet Wasallam an honor and pride for the history of Islam. According to Ibn Rashid, there was not a single individual from amongst Banu Abdul Muttalib except the Prophet who would not compose poetry. It was so common a practice amongst the Ansar of Medina that according to Anas Ta'ala, when Allah's Messenger came to us, all the Ansar people would compose Nath. I was asked, O oh, Anas, do you also compose Nath poetry? He said, yes. Hafiz Ibn Abdul Bir counted 120 companions composing Nath. Nath could not be made a practice in Mecca due to unfavorable and insecure circumstances there. There the companions would be on toes to protect and defend the Holy Prophet and themselves. In Medina, the Prophet's blessed presence was a spring season of blossoming flowers of love, dignity and fraternity all around. The companions would imbue their words with love and devotion and earn his favors, bliss, blessings and largesse. The world witnessed a flash flood of north overflowing the whole of society. The north culture existed and prospered even before his arrival in Medina. We need to ponder how the minor girls gathered in Kuba to offer their warmest poetic welcome on the arrival of the Prophet is a famous Nath song that we recite in our Nath programs even today. That's a great manifestation of Medina's love psyche for the beloved Messenger of Allah displayed in most spectacular manner on the very first day of his blissful arrival. The minor girls of Medina from amongst the Ansar welcomed him upon his blessed arrival with hand drums singing the celebrated lines of poetry. Oh, the full white moon rose over us from the very upper Bada. And we owe it to show gratefulness <coughs> where the call is to Allah. Oh, beloved, you were raised among us, came with a command to be obeyed. In this tradition of not poetry, that has reached our times and the right minds charged with sincere and fervent love for the Holy Messenger <coughs> have conceived it and disseminated its thought and throb to the entire community of seekers of the prophetic love the world over. Here I must highlight that Nath exists among us both as a genre and a spirit. When we talk of Nath as a genre, there are two literary modes 
developed a ripe literary minds criticize. I mention here an approach criticizing the glorification of physical beauty of Allah Messenger using symbols, similes, metaphors, imagery and other literary tools of aesthetic expression that our conventional poets of Ghazal employ to describe the beautiful features of the literary beloved, praising facial features, locks and tresses, captivating and fascinating eyes, blossoming lips and so on. The point the critics of not endeavor to make is why a not poet should employ the same similes, metaphors, imagery and lingual marvels to describe the glorious and exalted physical appearance of Allah's Messenger. I can name here two of these critics who discourage this type of not poetry, Dr. Asi Kanali and Dr. Rishad Shakrawan. Both are very senior Urdu poets and critics. I have a point of view to be generous about literary aesthetics employed to describe the physical beauty of our beloved Messenger of Allah. First of all, there are several Quranic verses where Almighty Allah has described the Messenger by taking oaths on him, about him, and with him. Iqbal says, He is the Quran, He is the Furqan, He is Yaseen, He is Taha. Allah swears an oath, metaphorically, by the growing morning bright, O Duha, by the night when it covers up, O Laila Saja. There are many more examples that can be quoted from the Quran. Let me quote here a prose drawn by the mother of the believers, Hazrat Aisha Siddiqua, who praised the dazzling beauty of the Prophet. She says, I was sitting, weaving cotton, and the beloved messenger of Allah was mending his shoes. He perspired, and the blessed sweat started emitting light. This beautiful sight entranced and lifted me out of myself. Seeing me in ecstasy, the exalted messenger of Allah said, Aisha, what happened? Why overwhelmed? I submitted, messenger of Allah, sweat is dropping from your blessed forehead, spurring light. Had Abu Kabir Hazri, the famous Arab poet, seen you, he would indeed have learned that truly you had the right to his poetic words. And the words said, Aisha, what has Abu Kabir Hazri said? The mother of the believers, Aisha said. I submitted, he says, the poet says, my love is pure of the blemish of man's lochia and feeding. If you see her effulgent visage, you will only see blushing cheeks. Look at the illumined face of the Prophet Hassan bin Sabit used to cover his eyes with his palms lest his dazzle should snatch his beard. When I saw his light shining forth, in fear I covered my eyes with my palms, afraid for my sight because of the beauty of his form. So I was scarcely able to look at him at all. The lights from his light are drowned in his light and his face shines out like the sun and moon in one. A spirit of light lodged in a body like the moon, a mantle made up of brilliant shining stars. I bore it until I could bear it no longer. So we find rich evidence of the description of a beloved messenger's exalted physical appearance in Hadith literature and collections of North poetry of companions. The second approach of North criticism refers to the use of linguistic tools of literary aesthetics employed to describe king's courts and the slave courtiers. 
a couple of our senior literary critics of North find it inappropriate to use any such expression in North, where the emerging image should resemble that of a quote of some worldly king. I heard respected Dr. Tariq Hashmi especially criticizing modern North from this viewpoint. Here I will quote only one example of a description of Allah's Messenger and his companions by Urwa bin Masood, who, before embracing Islam, was an advocate of the disbelievers of Mecca and went to negotiate with Allah's Messenger an agreement at Hudaybiyah. When he went back to Mecca, he described to the Quraysh chiefs what he saw there while he was at Hudaybiyah. According to Al Miswar bin Makhrama and Marwan, when Urwa came to the Messenger of Allah in Hudaybiyah as an advocate of the unbelievers, he kept observing the companions of the Prophet and saw how they would practice extreme veneration of the Holy Messenger of Allah. When Urwa returned to his companions, he said to them, O oh my people, by Allah, I have visited the kings, I have visited Caesar, Khosros, and Najashi, and by Allah, I have never seen a king revered by his companions to the extent that the companions of Muhammad revered Muhammad. By Allah, whenever Allah's messenger cleared his throat, of some sputum or saliva, one of his companions would take it on the palm of his hand, so he would rub it on his face and his skin. If he gave them a command, they would make haste to obey his command. If he performed the minor ablution, they would almost fight with one another over the water he has used for the purpose. If he spoke, they would lower their voices in his presence and would not raise their looks to see him in deep love, submissiveness and reverence for him, permeating their hearts. So, if our not poets describe the Prophet's glory using the symbols, similes, metaphors and imagery of the court of a king, that is a genuine expression of love and glorification, of the beloved messenger of Allah, which needs no criticism. Lastly, I want to quote Dr. Tariq Hashmi once again, who has brought to fore a very significant aspect of Nath poetry. According to him, Jannah of Nath is one thing and the spirit of Nath is altogether a different experience. While explaining his point, he says that Nath in the blessed times of Allah's Messenger was not a jana. We have seen that Nath was a sentiment that made the hearts of all the Muslims throb and according to Anas bin Malik, there was not a single soul in Medina who would not feel that throb and compose a Nath, including himself. That is called the spirit of not. However, Dr. Tariq Hashmi has explained his point in a different way. According to him, Iqbal has not composed Nath as a janner. It does not exist in his works as a janner, but it is the spirit of Nath that permeates his entire Persian as well as Urdu poetry. You are the tablet and the pen. You are the book itself. This watery dome of universe is like a bubble in your infinity. Such a not poetry has not been created by any Udu or Persian poet. But it is not a jana. Where should the stress lie? Jana or spirit? Dr. Hashmi has made a brilliant point here that we need to go for the spirit of not instead of employing all our potential and merely promoting not general, lacking spirit, the spirit of not, that we find 
in the blessed times of Allah's Messenger. The spirit of North that created a surge of North poetry in the colonial subcontinent and the North Journal became a means of manifestation of North spirit and the North spirit that places Iqbal at an exalted station of North poet, the unique, unprecedented and great North poet while he did not produce any North Journal. Let's produce standard North Journal imbued with North spirit.